Before I dive into why change is so hard, let's examine personality or state of being. Your personality is made of how you think, how you act, and how you feel, which is your state of being. Your state of being can fluctuate based on the circumstances you face and the environments you interact with. You could have a state of being at work and a different state of being at home. For this discussion, we're looking at state of being as the default way that you interact with others and yourself. For example, if your default way of thinking is uplifting and positive, you'll act in uplifting ways as you interact with others and the circumstances in your life. If your default way of thinking is doom and gloom or doubt, you'll act accordingly. In either example, how you feel inside will dovetail with how you think and act. So the uplifting thinking and acting person could feel excitement happiness, and a joy-filled heart, while the doom and gloomer will feel fearful, cautious, resigned, maybe depressed. Next, let's talk about the electrochemical nature of our brain and body. Every time you fire off a thought, your brain will cause a variety of chemicals to be produced in the body. Happy thoughts cause happy chemicals to be delivered to your body. Think dopamine and oxytocin. Thoughts of impending doom will trigger your sympathetic nervous system to turn on its production of the chemicals of stress, often referred to as adrenaline and cortisol. Be aware that you can have up to 1,400 chemical reactions going on in your body at any given moment. We truly are electrochemical by nature. Here's where it gets interesting. You are in some way addicted to the rush of chemicals coursing through your body. Who wouldn't want more dopamine or oxytocin? However, when the rush of energy caused by adrenaline flows through our veins, we can, over time, become addicted to the chemicals of stress. Now, don't get me wrong. We need adrenaline and cortisol. As part of the sympathetic nervous system, these chemicals keep us alive. It's how we can stay clear of the saber-toothed tiger that's chasing us. But when that saber-toothed tiger is our significant other, our boss, or a coworker, it is maladaptive to turn on the chemical stress response. So why do we do this and get beaten up by our environment or circumstances? Mostly because we're addicted to the chemicals of stress. So get this, like a junkie is addicted to heroin, you can become addicted to the chemicals of stress and a life you don't even want. Now back to your state of being. You learn that your state of being is defined by how you think, how you act, and how you feel. If you wanna change your state of being, you'll need to do what? That's right. You will need to have new thoughts, take new actions, and ultimately create new feelings. Sounds simple, right? In theory, it is simple. However, often it's very difficult. Let's say you wanna change something in your life. Maybe you wanna eat healthier. To do that, you'll have to have a new thought, followed by a new choice about what new actions you could take. Making that new choice is the hardest part of changing. Why is that? For starters, you are going to feel uncomfortable because of your addiction to the chemicals associated with the old thought. Just like a person addicted to gambling has a hard time stopping their addictive behaviors, you will have a hard time letting go of the rush of chemicals associated with your old conditioning. Now consider that the new thought and action are not familiar to you, while the old thought is very familiar you'll have to step into the unknown. After all, you've likely been thinking the old thought or some version of it for most of your life. The unknown is an uncomfortable place for most people. Let's recap. To change something in your life, you'll have to change your state of being and your state of being is made of how you think, how you act, and how you feel. 
We next define the electrochemical nature of a thought, whereas every thought produces a chemical. Highly charged thoughts produce a volatile chemical reaction. Next, your state of being and the thoughts associated with it are familiar and known. New thoughts and new actions live in the unknown. It is easy to live your life in the known and uncomfortable to live it in the unknown. The known is the past. The unknown resides in the present moment. So we can say that change is hard. Let's reflect on the individual mentioned earlier that is striving to eat healthier. They set a goal, perhaps making a New Year's resolution to cease consuming junk food and opt for a healthier diet. They might even decide to become a vegetarian. Initially, they embrace the change for a few days, but then the withdrawal symptoms emerge, the discomfort associated with not experiencing the familiar chemicals linked to poor eating habits. They start craving those familiar chemicals and the discomfort becomes a significant hurdle. Ultimately, the addiction to the chemicals of their old ways proves overwhelming, prompting a return to their former and comfortable eating habits. There is a way forward and you have initiated it by listening to this video. It all starts with learning new information. You are doing that right now. You are also becoming self-aware of your thoughts, actions, and feelings. Knowledge is the precursor to experience, and knowledge of the self is self-empowerment. You could say self-awareness is getting to work on your life. A tool for becoming self-aware is journaling. In my coaching and change training practice, I always suggest journaling to drive higher levels of self-awareness. If you'd like to become a master at creating new results in any area of life, register for my next Neuro Change Solutions, Change Your Mind, Create New Results workshop. We begin on Tuesday, February 6th, online via Zoom conferencing. This workshop teaches how to create sustainable change based on the teachings of Dr. Joe Dispenza. You will learn how to create a new state of being, to manifest anything you desire, how to stop your reliance on the chemicals of stress, to become emotionally intelligent, highly engaged, creative, and productive. Go to my website, everestperformancecoaching.com, click on services, then change your mind, create new results, where you can register for my February workshop. The time investment is minimal, yet the results are nothing short of amazing. I promise that. The Change Your Mind, Create New Results workshop follows a well-defined process based on the neuroscience of change, enabling you to transform yourself, your team, and your business. If you would like to comment or have a question, reach out to me by phone or text at 586-246. 6606, email me at tom at everest.coach, or while on my website, click on start a conversation with Tom to schedule a talk. It's at the top right. I am committed to supporting your growth and happiness. Thank you for watching.